Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'll be making resin wedding table accessories using epoxy resins from J Diction. My place card cubes are 5 centimeters deep and I'm using deep pour resin so that's going to be about two or three days to cure right? Actually, no, these pieces were all cured within three hours with J. Diction's resin curing machine. So, if you would like to see how I made all these place settings, and if you would like to see what I thought about J. Diction's resin curing machine, stay tuned and enjoy the video. <laughs> Last month you might have seen my video where I reviewed a resin curing machine and although it did work, it did speed up the resin curing process, I wasn't impressed with the space. I just could only use tiny moulds. But then along comes a parcel from J Diction with their resin curing machine and wow, <laughs> what a game changer. There's no problem with space with this one. Not only does each tray have a larger surface area for things such as coasters and bookmarks, but it's also got a silicon insert which heightens the level of one of the layers. So you can put in a mould of up to five centimetres. So that got me quite excited because I tend to do castings of larger things. So I couldn't wait to have a go. Right, before I get on with my explanations of what I'm doing today, I need to apologise for the lighting. My desk is right next to the window and it was a really bright sunny morning and I went to pull down the blind to um, and then just, you know, have a light on instead. <laughs> and I literally did pull down the blind. As I'm filming this, I was surrounded with everything on the floor which the blind had knocked onto the floor when it fell down all my pencil crayons everything <laughs> but i'd already mixed the resin so i had to carry on anyway right <laughs> now let's get on with today's project I'm using deep casting resin from J Diction for this one because I wanted to find out what would happen if you put something you know really deep I've gone to five centimeters in this project into a resin curing machine I wanted to see how it would be affected the first two things I'm making are the place card holders and the napkin rings and those are the two things that I'm going to be using the deep casting resin for which has a maximum pouring depth of five centimeters. I've got some white pigment powder from J Diction and I'm also going to be using some liquid pigments, the translucent liquid pigments from J Diction. I'm going with blue and pink for the bride and groom colour scheme and I know it's a bit of a stereotype to use those colours but I like them and so I'm using them. I also had a pot of clear resin and I just added some gold leaf flakes to those. My tip for handling gold leaf flakes would be don't use your fingers if you're wearing your nitrile gloves because it will stick to your fingers. The best thing I've found to use is a couple of wooden lollipop sticks just to grab them a little bit like you're using chopsticks and then they won't stick to what you're using. A lot of things you try to use like tweezers or things like that it will just cling to them and it won't cling to the wood so that's what I would recommend. It's still a bit messy, but it's easy to clean it up. And once they're in, give it a really, really good stir and all those big chunks of gold flakes will break up into smaller pieces. The cube moulds, which I'm using for my place card holders today, are not designed for resin. I got them ages ago because I thought they looked really good. They make some really good resin cubes. But I think they feel like cakes, fancy cakes and things like that. Um, yeah, 
The thing is, I will tell you now, I wouldn't recommend them for resin. If you're going to be doing it all in one pour like I'm doing today, the sides just weren't strong enough to support the weight of all that resin in there and they kind of bulged out. So my sides of my cubes when I'd finished were not flat. So yeah, just thought I'd explain what I'm using there for the place card holders. And for the napkin rings, I had a clever idea. Well, yeah, I thought it was a clever idea until... I wasn't so clever, but I'll tell you about that in a moment. <laughs> I've got those two green moulds are pot moulds and they make really good little pots. Now, my idea was to fill them just part of the way, just to, until I reach the top of that inner piece, which I'm pouring on now. I just wanted to reach the top, but... I kind of went into autopilot and forgot I was doing that <laughs> and I filled them all the way up which you'll see in a minute anyway um I started off with my gold leaf flakes and then I used the white and then the color on the top and everything seemed to be going oh so well until I realized that I'd filled the green mould up all the way by mistake. And so I had to find another mould to pour those into until there was less in there. <sighs> so, But before I could do that, I had to cut it in half, which is what I'm doing now. Honestly, you know, do you ever have one of those days where you just know straight away where, that everything you do is going to go wrong? Well, yeah, as I think as soon as that blind came down in my hand, well, I think I knew then that this wasn't going to be a very good morning. <laughs> Luckily, everything turned out OK, but it was a trial. Right then, so now I need to very carefully pour the <laughs> excess resin into another mould. And luckily, everything turned out OK and it wasn't too messy. It just, you know, it messed up my colour scheme a little bit because everything got mixed together. But sometimes, you know, I don't know if you found this as well, but the things that go wrong turn out to be the best things. And you'll see when I demould these that they turned out really good. So, yeah, I had some ex ex I had some extra resin left to just fill up that mould. And the other one I poured into a crystal mould and that all went wrong as well because I knocked it over and got resin everywhere. Honestly, it was a terrible morning. <laughs> okay then, on to the coasters. I've got another tray from my curing machine and it's always best to work actually in the tray. Um, then you don't have to worry about moving them afterwards. And for this, I'm using exactly the same colour scheme. I'm using the gold leaf again, but I've mixed that a lot thicker. And this time, instead of using the deep casting resin, I'm just using Jade Diction's regular epoxy resin. I wanted the gold leaf mixture to be really thick so that it would kind of form a little bit of a barrier in the middle because I wanted to pour the white and the colour either side of the gold line and it worked really well and I'm going to try this again because I liked the finished result. So I just poured the two colours in at the same time either side of the gold line and let the resin work its magic by itself and this idea is good if you're a beginner because you can't really go wrong uh, unless you really want a definite line between the two colours then that's a bit more tricky. But if you're happy for them to merge together, this is really easy and you get some really interesting effects happening. Now, these coaster moulds which I've used are quite good. I quite like them. However, do you see that lip that goes over the top? That can cause problems because all the bubbles that come out of the res resin, the, the rise to the top, and they tend to get trapped under there. And I hadn't really thought that one through. When you're using a resin curing machine, everything gets sped up. And, you know, the bubbles don't have as much chance to escape by themselves. 
So you kind of need to get rid of as much of the bubbles as you can before you put it in the machine. It's best to leave it for about half an hour before you put it in and switch the machine on. So as many bubbles as possible can escape. But I did find that they got trapped under that lip quite a lot in these coasters. Now everything's ready, it's time to pop it onto the resin curing machine. So there goes the first one, easy peasy. With the second one, I nearly put it on the wrong way. If I'd have put it on the way it was going on, it would have been too close to the coasters, that second level. So what you have to do is turn it around 180 degrees and it's kept very clever. It brings it up higher so that there's more space in there. So yeah, that's what I did there. Okay, now for the settings. The knob on the right is for the temperature and I just wanted it on the lowest temperature, which is 35. And it's not flashing, it's just my camera doesn't like the display on there and it's making it look like it's flashing. <laughs> so yeah, the 35 you see, you might be able to see on the right on those numbers is for the temperature. And that 0, 2 on the left means 2 hours. And so that knob on the left is for setting the amount of time. Okay, I waited for everything to be cured before demoulding, but the coasters and the solid blocks of resin were actually ready after two hours. Can you believe that? Two hours? Normally it would take two days for five centimetres of deep pour resin to cure. That's how good that machine is for speeding up the curing. And there's the coaster look. And anyway, the uh, napkin rings, they did take longer because it was a smaller mass of resin. Resin cures more quickly the more deeply it's poured and the more of it that you've got of it, if that makes sense. It does cure quicker that way. But if you've got a small amount of deep pour resin or any resin, it will take a lot longer to cure. So yeah, that took, the napkin rings took three hours altogether. And I'm really pleased with the coasters. Apart from those bubbles I was telling you about that got trapped under the lip of the coaster, I think they're really nice. And I like the back as well. They kind of look like flowers growing up from the dark part at the bottom, don't they? That's what I thought. I actually was thinking that would be quite nice as the top of the coaster, but I kept it the other way around in the end with the top as um, as I poured it, that was the top. But the, yeah, I think that's quite cute, those back bits. So what I did do was I cut some decals on my Cricut for the coasters and I put a layer of heat resistant resin on the top. And I didn't film that, but you'll see that shortly and here's the place card holders and they've come out really interesting but can you see how the sides have bulged because of those flimsy molds they really weren't ideal but there's some really interesting patterns going on in there but also something I want to point out is the bubbles you get on the sides now all I can think is that that deep pour resin just didn't have long enough to let all those bubbles escape. I'm thinking if I'd have left it longer before putting it in the curing machine, maybe even a couple of hours to really let the bubbles rise to the top and, you know, to get rid of them, then put it in the curing machine, I would have got a much better result. So yeah, that is something to consider with resin curing machines. The bubbles can be something you've got to think a little bit more carefully about. And here's that pot. And, and you know, considering that was something that I just used to pour my extra resin in, that actually turned out quite cute, didn't it? The thing with those moulds, though, is that they're not very shiny on the inside, so it's quite a matte finish, but still... I like that. So onto the napkin rings. Let's have a look at those. So out of everything I made, I think these were my favourite. I don't know. I think, I just think that the idea of partially filling a pot mould to get a ring like that is just 
just a bit of a game changer, really, <laughs> because it opens up so many other possibilities. And now I'm going to be making napkin rings all the time, aren't I? Mind you, we never use napkins in our house. So anyway, <laughs> this would be good for the um, wedding table idea because obviously you're going to have your posh napkins at the wedding table and there they are i really like them now that surface that that you can see where i poured is obviously rough and that's going to need sanding and i also put a little layer of uv resin on which you're going to see next so i'm just using a nail file just to smooth down those edges and I'm leaving a lip you always get a lip at the top when you pour into a mold and that can be really useful if you need to do a top coat of resin because it stops it from pouring over the sides so I just gently sanded it just to make sure it wasn't sharp but I left the lips there and then poured in my J Diction UV resin very carefully just around that top edge and cured it under my UV lamp and it was really easy and I actually did the same thing to the other side even though I didn't need to but I thought I'd best make both sides nice and shiny so that they're matching so yeah that's all I did the only reason I did the other side and you can see how easy it is just to pour it in and then you can use a cocktail stick or something just to tease it to the edges if there's any bits where it hasn't quite rested onto the edges and you've got gaps. So yeah, just make sure it's completely covered before putting it under the UV lamp for two minutes and then that's it, it's done. So as I said, I did the same thing on the other ends and this is how they looked when they were completely finished. Now, because I had that problem with the bubbles on the side of my place card holders, I decided to cover them up. So I made some table numbers on my Cricut and I'm just um, attaching those to the sides to cover up the bubbles. And it's functional as well because you need your table numbers at a wedding. And the slight problem was because those sides had been a you know, they bulged a little bit. It was hard to get the decals on. So it took a few attempts to get it down flat without any creases in it. But I got there and I think they look quite good. And so once they were done, it was time to drill a hole in the middle. And so I marked out the centre of the top with a dry wipe pen, so that could just be wiped off. And I used my Dremel just to make a shallow hole. It, I suppose it was about a centimetre in the middle. When you're drilling resin, you must always make sure you wear a dust mask or do it outside if you can, because you don't want to be inhaling that powder. And I've got a place card holder clip to glue in and I'm using E6000 glue. Really, I should have used a smaller drill bit because my hole was a little bit too big, but I just put plenty of glue on and it was okay. It just, it was a bit hard to make it stand up straight, <laughs> but I was being lazy, you see. I couldn't be bothered to go into my toolbox to find a smaller drill bit and I just used the one I had. That'll teach me for being lazy, won't it? But I love these memo holder clips. I think they're so useful for different things. And the thing is, after the wedding, these can be taken home as souvenirs and used to put little reminders on or, you know, clip anything onto that you don't want to forget about. So, yeah, I think they're really good. So here we have the finished pieces and overall I'm quite happy with the results. Now, what do I think of the J Diction resin curing machine? Well, it did everything it said it would do. It really sped up the curing time massively. Also, the amount of space in there has been really thought out. And I'm mean, very impressed with the design. With that silicon extension, it's just fantastic. The thing I would say is... The bubbles can be a problem when you're speeding up curing. Whichever resin curing machine you choose, it will be the same with all of them. But if you want to get a resin curing machine, this is the one I would recommend. 
If you would like to check out the J Diction curing machine, please look in my video description for the link and the discount code. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will see you again next week. Bye for now. Addiction Res